A warm welcome to Singing Tips. Today's tutorial is the hauntingly beautiful ballad Danny Boy. It's a classic, suitable for solo performance or a sing-along. And whether you're a seasoned performer or a beginner, I'll guide you to sing this technically better than ever before, but also with more emotion and expression. So grab yourself a cup of tea or better still an Irish coffee if you're over 18 and let's get into it. The words of Danny Boy are by an English lawyer um, called Fred Weatherly who um, wrote songs as a kind of sideline. It was actually his kind of passion project, I suppose. Um, and if you can picture the scene, if you can imagine what things were like in Ireland in the late 1800s when the um, huge potato famine was on, over a million people died and a million more um, fled Ireland. Um, and this song is generally believed to be a farewell, um, a parent farewelling a son, knowing that they would never see their child again. So it's very evocative of Ireland. It mentions the mountains and the glens and the pipes. Um, so it's just a really beautiful poem. And then Fred Weatherly's sister-in-law was in Colorado during the gold rush, um, who her family had possibly also exited um, the UK because of hardship. Um, and she had heard the Londonderry Air, which is the tune of Danny Boy that we all know. Um, and she'd sent a copy of that back to Fred in England and he um, married the two together. So his words and the Londonderry Air, and then he arranged them so that they worked together. Um, and created this very beautifully evocative and haunting song, Danny Boy. If you like my tutorials, please like and subscribe and feel free to share them with your friends and um, drop a comment. I always love to hear from you and hear what you have to say. We're going to get into the structure of the song now. So it consists of two verses which sort of have a verse and chorus kind of thing. Um, so, so the two um, sections um, are split into two subsections. It becomes clear when you hear the tune, it's, it's not complicated. Um, and the key, well, I've got it here in F major. It actually has quite a big range um, and I've transposed it down. In F major, it goes all the way up to a top A, which is a little bit high for some people. So I've transposed it down actually into D flat major, um, but it's available in all sorts of different keys. You have to remember, of course, that the tune, it's essentially a folk song. So um, you can sing it completely a cappella, very, very effectively. So you can choose any key that you like for that. Um, but the Weatherly arrangement is available as a PDF in multiple different keys. So a bit of trial and error, you'll find the key that works for you. Um, speed wise, again, it says Andante in the copy that I've got, which means at walking pace, so it's not hurried. Um, I think it needs a lot of rubato, which um, it means to rob. And basically rubato is all about playing with the rhythm so that it follows natural speech patterns and follows what the music feels like it wants to do. So it's not rigid in structure. Um, rubato means that you can just steal a little bit of that value of that note and add it to this note so you get a much more flexible um, sense of rhythm within the song. That of course lends itself really well to a cappella singing. So remember you have to warm up even though this is only a folk song it actually has a huge range um, and it would be really um, not prudent to attempt this without having warmed your voice up fully first. Um, so lots of humming, sirens, all the usual things that you do to get your voice going. And then because there's um, an interval of a sixth which comes and it's a very significant moment in the song, there's an exercise that I have that um, I do which goes So you're, you're um, singing very smoothly up and 
a major sixth and then you come down the major triad so it's all just one smooth connected legato flow of air and then I just go up in semitones and so on and so forth until we hit um, up here which is where it happens in the song and I might go a semitone higher just to make sure that I have warmed everything up beyond the point of the highest note well the frog got me there and that's why we have to warm our voices up because we don't want that happening in actual performance you'll have noticed that I did the right thing as well and sang through the frog I didn't clear my throat and now it's gone so that was probably quite a great demonstration of singing through a frog here we are at the technical section now English, I have to say, is probably one of the hardest languages to sing in because it's full of diphthongs and all sorts of funny anomalies. Um, so I'll speak the text through and then sing it through and help you um, with the placement of some of those diphthongs. We'll talk about that in a second. So the first thing that you need to know is that we're in 4-4 four, four time. So we've got one, two, three three oh danny boy the pipes the pipes are calling so let's just um say that together oh danny boy the pipes the pipes are calling that's our rhythm what we have to be careful of is words like oh so the very first word that you sing needs a smooth vowel onset so no uh, oh bumping and also because it's made up of two sounds oh make up the word oh um, we need to put the second of those sounds on late so we have oh so the worst sound of oh needs to be attached to the next word which is Danny so we have oh Danny boy and that's another diphthong oh boy boy oi actually boy so the y sound becomes as late as possible the pipes the pipes are calling so we've got two uses of the word the in this sentence and we have to be really careful not to emphasize those so I go through my score and put brackets around the word the so that I'm never tempted to hit it too hard and make it an important word so here we are. I'll sing it for you first. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. So I tend to breathe after Oh, Danny boy, the pipes. There, the pipes are calling from glen to glen is the next sentence. So it actually goes through after calling all the way through from glen to glen and your next breath is after glen so let's just sing all of that together your first breath is going to be after the pipes here we go oh danny boy the pipes the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountain side so at the end of calling we need a, a ng sound that is it sort of gets stuck part way down you but down your nose like when you say, say the word song it's that same sound calling from glen to glen breath and down we want the double d end of the word and and a fresh D for the beginning of the word down and down the mountain side. There's quite a lot in that opening phrase. So let's just do all of that again together. Remember smooth vowel onset, late diphthongs, um, calling ng, ng, and, and down. They're the things that we're going to focus on this time. Two, three. 
is a funny word to sing as well. Mountain. Mountain. Um, then you're going to take a breath. The next phrase is the summer's gone, breath, and all the roses falling, breath, it's you, breath, it's you must go, breath, and I must bide. So there are a lot of commas in here, and I'm going to remove a couple of them. And all the roses falling, we're going to keep that one. It's you, it's you. I think we're just going to lift there. It's you lift, it's you must go, breath, and I must bide. So let's just say that together again. The summer's gone, breath, and all the roses falling, breath. It's you, lift, it's you must go, breath, and I must bide. So just going through, the summer's gone. Um, there's nothing too funny about the English in there. I think that's all okay. And all the roses, roses, um, it's not roses, so it's more of an i sound. Roses falling, same ng sound as before. It's you, it's you must go, must go. So we need the t at the end of must and the g of go. And with a d on the end, I must bide. Bide is short for abide, it means to stay. So, Sung, this one sounds like this. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must bide. So there's quite a lot in there. Let's just sing that together again. The summer's gone, breath, and all the roses falling, breath. It's you, it's you must go, breath, and I must bide. The next bit, but come ye back when summer's in the meadow. So again, just go through and put the word the in brackets because you don't want to make it an important word inadvertently. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow. Um, let's just say it together. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow. So there's no breath in there, so you need a really big breath after bide, and then we'll go through all the way to meadow. So this is um, the second section of the first verse. So you'll, you'll hear that the melody changes. So here it is. But come ye back when summer's in the So, but come ye back when summer's in the meadow. I think su of summer and me of meadow are our important words there. I'm just marking them myself so that I remember to do it when we have to sing along in a minute. Um, also, we haven't talked about dynamics. So the dynamics generally to start with in the song are quite quiet so we're going to be mp but here we have a crescendo but we're not going to go too loud because that really happens more in the second verse so we might go up to forte at the loudest point in this verse um, and then be looking at maybe fortissimo in the second verse so we're going to start quietly maybe mp but come ye back getting up to mezzo forte, and then when we do the next phrase, we'll get up to forte. So here we go. One, two, three, four, 
two, three. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, breath, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. So with this one, you can grab a breath after hushed. And we're going to employ a technique called word painting, which is when we make the note that we sing sound like the word um, that we're singing. So I would be doing, oh, when the valley's hushed. So it almost isn't pitched, it's just a almost spoken hushed breath and white with snow. So I don't know whether you've um, experienced, I don't know which country you're in, whether you've um, experienced a heavy snowfall and the effect that that has on dampening sound. So that's what this is about, when the valley's hushed and white with snow. Just everything goes really, really quiet when there's been a heavy snowfall. Let's sing it together. Oh, when the and white with snow snow it's a long note it's a diphthong which means that the ah oh sound is the one that lasts the longest and the oo oh comes on at the very end if you sing a long note and bring your second part of the diphthong in too early you get a really muddy vowel that just doesn't resonate and doesn't sound nice so we don't want snow and getting stuck on that second sound we want snow so the worst sound goes right at the very end then you need a big breath the next bit of text it's i'll be here in sunshine breath or in shadow so it's i'll be here is a little idiomatic um Irish um, idiomatic way of speaking. It's an Irish inflection. Um, it's I'll be here means um, this is what's going to happen. So it's just a way of saying this is what's going to happen. It's I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy. Oh, Danny boy. I love you so. So here we go. The tune here is where we have that six that we just practiced in the warm-ups. It's I'll be here in sunshine breath or in shadow. So with here, <laughs> the London Derry Air and Fred Weatherly haven't been particularly helpful in that they have given you an E vowel to sing on the highest note. So it's the tightest vowel that we have, E. So we have to modify it and sing more of an R ah sound. It's I'll be here. So you'll see that I'm dropping my jaw, opening my mouth wider than I feel that I want to for an E sound, but it still sounds like E. You have to really work hard to get your mouth into the R shape, but still sing an E vowel. Let's go again. It's I'll be here in sunshine breath or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. So I'm going to breathe after the first, oh Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so, and then go through the second, oh Danny boy. Um, the other thing you can do with that high note is to make sure that you pitch the H of here on the note. It's I'll be here. Keeping the air flowing. So don't stop the airflow between be here because that's going to make it really hard. Keep the air flowing. It's I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, breath. Oh, Danny boy, I love. 
love you so. And then there's just a tiny little bit of um, piano accompaniment in the middle if you're doing it with the piano part. If you're doing it a cappella, you just take a nice relaxed breath and come straight back in. Second verse has a slightly different flavor, so it becomes a little bit less descriptive and a bit more personal. So you're the parent um, and you're starting to think about your own mortality and the fact that you're not going to sing uh, to see your um, offspring again. So, but when ye come, breath, and all the flowers are dying. So flowers is truncated. Normally flowers is two notes, two syllables, two notes. But here we've just got that truncated to flowers. So you have to manage to sing ours on one single quaver. So, but when ye come, breath, and all the flowers are dying, breath, dying. Again, it's that ng sound at the end. If I am dead, breath, as dead I well may be. So well is your important word. If I am dead, first emphasis, as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying. Now that's actually a really long phrase. Um, so you can breathe. I wouldn't breathe after find. You'll come and find the place where I am lying because that's just not very musical. You'll come and find the place where I am lying. So you can take one after place. Then there's a breath after lying and kneel and say an ave there for me. So um, ave Maria and kneel and kneel and say an ave there for me. So let's just say all of that together right from the very beginning of that verse and I'll call out the breaths. But when ye come, breath, and all the flowers are dying, breath, if I am dead, as dead I well may be, breath, ye'll come and find the place where I am lying, breath, and kneel and say an ave there for me. Some funny words in there. What was the one that I suddenly thought of that's a bit of a funny one? I can't find it now. If I am dead as dead I well may be. Ye'll come. So that's you will. It's just a very old fashioned way of saying you will. You'll come and find the place where I am lying. Yes. Okay. Let's sing through um, the opening couple of phrases of this. Now it's the same tune as the very beginning. But when ye come, breath, and all the flowers are dying, breath, if I am dead, as dead I well may be. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? The cat's joining in just as we get to the sad part. Let's just go again from but when ye come. But when ye come, breath, and all the flowers are dying, breath, if I am dead, as dead I well may be, breath. So I think we need to be back to mezzo piano here. Um, and it's all quite, um, I think it's quite inward looking. It's, it's much more personal at this, at this point. Um, so I don't think you're singing it to the back of the concert hall by any stretch of the, uh, the imagination. I think it's much more introspective. Um, if I go from you'll come and find the place where I am lying, this bit sounds like this. Ye'll come and find the place, breath, where I am lying, breath, 
and kneel and say an ave there for me um i'm just looking to see if there's an alternate breath for that phrase and kneel and so you could take one after kneel if you didn't think you were going to get through it i would just put that in brackets just and practice both ways it's quite a long phrase and kneel and say an ave there for me next bit of text and i shall hear though soft you tread above me and i shall hear is probably mezzo forte and then though soft is like we did before with hushed when you sing the note and the word um, to reflect the meaning of the word though soft you tread above me so you would sing and i shall hear breath though soft you tread above me breath and all my grave will warmer sweeter be so I would take the next breath and all my grave will warmer breath because there's a comma sweeter be so if I sing that now for you and I shall hear breath though soft you tread above me um here Again, it's dropping your jaw and finding the R space, but singing an E sound. Here, and again, pitching the H on the note. Um, I'll just do that again. It's right on the page turn. And I shall hear the soft you tread above me. Um, above me. Keep the vowel the same as you come down that um, triad. Bah, don't close down. Because then you'll get stuck in a really unresonating um, pattern there. Bah, me. So if you think about attaching the v of bov to the m of me, that will fix that one for you. Of me. Let's just do that again together from and I shall hear. Big breath. And I shall hear breath, though soft you tread above me. And all my grave will warmer, sweeter be. Sounds like this. And all my grave will warmer, sweeter be. Nothing too tricky in there. And all my, and just make sure that you don't do and. You don't want to glot all there. And just let the air flow and attach the voice to it for that smooth vo vowel onset. And all my grave will warmer breath sweeter be. Now, you need a big breath here because the phrase is, for you will bend and tell me breath that you love me. If you can get through all of that in one breath, power to you. I probably wouldn't because it goes up to a high note. It all uses a lot of breath because it's forte at this point. is the, you know, the climax of the whole song. So for safety, I would always take a breath after and tell me that you love me. So it sounds like this. Say, say it actually with me first. For you will bend and tell me that you love me so sung it sounds like this for you will bend and tell me that you love me and again love me is exactly the same as above me and two systems further up the um, sheet love me so a really good v attached to the m of me um bend pitch the b on the upper note bend 
open your mouth wide, find the R space and you'll be absolutely fine. The note will just pop out for you. Um, and I think that's the only, yeah, that's the only really tricky thing there. For you will bend, let's sing that together. For you will bend and tell me breath that you love me. Final phrase, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Again, because it's such a slow song, um, you're probably going to need a breath in there. There isn't anything marked, there's no punctuation in the middle of that, but there's no shame in taking a breath rather than running out because you want to hold the last note for a long time as well. So I would take a breath. And I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. And if you're doing this completely a cappella, um, you can repeat that last phrase just as a, a, a real um, nice way of just finishing the whole song off. So you would sing the last phrase twice. And I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. And I shall sleep in peace until you come to me with a nice long writ the second time through if you wanted to. So that's our technical breakdown of the whole song. Um, I think the only other thing I want to say is what you could do with this one because it has to be really legato. I mean it's such a such a a smooth connected feel to the whole song and um, what you could do is you could practice it just to the vowel sounds so taking out all of the consonants so it would go something like this oh, I, oh, I, 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 oh, I, just to get that real feeling of connection from one note to another. Um, and then when you've got it so that it feels just completely smooth and resonating evenly from note to note, then you can pop your consonants back in and start really emphasizing those important words um, and really focusing on the diction. It's all about telling the story, so your diction has to be absolutely impeccable. Let's just talk now about performance. Um, You'll have realised, obviously, that this is a highly emotive um, piece of music. Both the melody is emotive, but the words certainly are very emotive. And in order to carry that off, to pull it off, you, you need to be thinking about your audience and moving them, taking them on the journey with you. So you really have to think about some something, you know, saying goodbye to somebody that you love and what that would feel like if you knew that you were never ever going to see them again. Be cautious about how much emotion you're prepared to experiment with. You need to feel the real emotion, but don't go overboard because the reaction to your emotion might just tip you over the edge and then you might not be able to actually continue singing and sing, um, sing it and do it justice. Um, so yeah, just make it genuine um, and enjoy it. I mean, the story is really, really lovely and it's all about um, comfort. Um, and I think that's, that's the thing that you probably need to focus on. It's that feeling of comfort, that you're secure in the knowledge um, that this person loves you back um, and that you're going to see them again on the other side. So let's put it all into practice now with the sing-along. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling it's you it's you must go and i must buy 
give the but come ye back when summer's in the meadow oh, when the valley's hushed and white with snow it's I'll be Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so. But when ye come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead, as dead I well may be. He'll come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an ave there for me. And I shall hear those soft you tread above me and all my grave will warmer, sweeter be. For you will bend and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me Thanks for watching right to the very end I really appreciate your support if you would like to consider joining, you can become a member and you could send me your um, rendition for my appraisal is one of the perks that are available there. Or you can contact me directly through my website, singinglessons.online.